Welcome back. I'm Tyler, and I've drug you into my closet today because Cameraman is too sleepy for Man vs. Kawaii, and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to kidnap you, drag you into a confined space, and make you watch how I put a coordinate together. And today, I'm going to take you step by step into just how I accomplished this interesting look. And right off the bat, just because it would be cheating if I went with Sugar Candy Shop right here because I'm already wearing the matching headpiece, Instead, we're gonna go with Wonder Cookie, an adorable 2010 era sweet piece by Angelic Pretty. So we've already completed our first step, which is a pick a main piece. That is where I start. So what I will do is I will take that and I will usually hang it somewhere back here. Which brings us to step number two. Once I've picked my main piece, I need to pick a blouse. Just because of the makeup I'm wearing and the first thing that jumped out at me is the pink, we're gonna go with a pink blouse. Now this is the point where you wanna match the hue of your blouse to the pinks that are in your JSK. Can you get around not matching your pinks? Yes. Is it harder? Yes. Am I doing an advanced coordinating tutorial right now? No. So we're just gonna see if this pink matches. I am not wowed by this one. All I can say is that you'll know it when you'll see it. Your blouse hue does not have to be the exact same color. You just want it in the ballpark and you just want to work with what you're happiest with. So I'm going to try this one now. I like this one a lot better because it kind of lines up a lot more with these strawberry ice cream stripes. This is going to make a much cuter look than say this lighter, more powdery pink from the baby blouse earlier. Okay, so we picked our JSK, we picked our blouse. What's next? For me, that is almost always the necklace. Well, you can wear things that aren't on the print, obviously, sweet Lily just don't care. If I have it, I like to match the theme. And the theme of this one is teapots, cookies, cute little cards, sweets, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the color, the accent color that I've added here, this pink blouse, it pulls on these pink tea kettles, and I want a pink necklace to keep that theme going. It's kind of framing feeling. And while this is almost cheating, I'm actually considering using the matching necklace for Wonder Cookie, this little teapot cookie necklace with this cord, because it was built to go with this cord. <laughs> now, if I don't want to go the cheater route and just wear the fracking thing that came with the set, which by the way, I did not get those things at the same time. It took me years to find that fracking teapot necklace. I might look at this too, this other necklace from AP, this cute little heart macaron thing that I think is really cute. And actually, as much as I like that teapot, I like this heart necklace better. The heart macaron is a nice little pop of pink in the otherwise sea of blue, and it matches the accents that we put with it, with the pink blouse. Next up, I'll start looking for my rings. I want to bring pinks and I want to bring blues. When it comes to my rings, I like to go back and forth like what I'm wearing right now. Blue, pink, pink, blue. I do think this cookie ring will look really cute with it. This matches almost perfectly. I'm just going to go ahead and wear this cute little blue AP bunny rings and I'll just take off my BB and B ring and I'll replace it with that blue bow ring. So my, my fingers are pretty much done at this point. I've already gone back, forth, back, forth. At that point, it's time for bracelets. Again, just keep in mind what's already in the print. This print is so easy to color because it has so many fracking colors. Pretty much everything that's on my wrists already, I would wear with that. Let's get a look at what's already on my wrists. To me, wrists are like little filler areas, you know? Most things get lost in the shuffle anyways. You just want your general pastel colors brought to the forefront so long as they're in the print. So we've got our JSK blouse, necklace, bracelets, rings. Next up is wrist cuffs. And for me, I have two modes. Either I match the wrist cuffs to the color of my JSK or I match the wrist cuffs to the color of my blouse. These pair of wrist cuffs have all the colors of the JSK in them, and they've got a little bit of pink for the blouse. So we're gonna put these in the maybe pile. The second way that you do it would be to pull the pink that you've already worked in with the blouse, such as these wrist cuffs right here, which are close enough. And if you put them down here, look really cute and pull the pink of the blouse onto your wrist. So they keep that theme going. So we have two pairs of wrist cuffs to choose between that we will choose between shortly. So our next step is choosing headwear. I know this can be kind of confusing considering you would think that would be one of the first things you would choose because your head is at the top of your body. For me, I like to build most of the cord before I get the headwear because the headwear needs to pull on the cord. For me, it's not the other way around. So at this point, I'll start looking for something that matches what I have already created, which means we can do blue headwear, pink headwear, or blue and pink headwear. Do I have the matching head bow? Yes, I do. Do I want to wear the matching head bow right now? I'm not feeling it. So I'm going to go with something else. You don't necessarily have to wear the matching head bow for the JSK you got. You can mix it up. I have this like princessy head bow, which I could use. 
See, I love this head bow. It's a real workhorse. However, it's a little too princessy for what I put together. I put together a kind of cafe cutesy vibe for this cord and I'm just not, I'm just not feeling the princessy head bow. So I'll put that back. That's another subtle thing in cording that you might not think of until you've been in the fashion for a little bit. There's, there's a certain theme to things. The head bow that I just showed you looks like we're going to a ball. This cord looks like we're going to a bakery. Might try something like this. This looks pretty promising. Kind of a lavendery bluish. Try this white and pink one. Post cafe. Two hours later. I just remembered what was on my head. <laughs> I was looking for the thing that I was wearing on my head. And you know what? I know it feels like cheating, but I'm gonna wear the thing that's already on my head with that fracking dress. Why? Because obvious reasons why. I mean, look at this thing. It's like a cafe, cute, AP bakery style dress. And I'm wearing a cafe style headdress on my head already. So next up, socks. Same debate. You can match the dress, you can match the blouse, or you can put a little bit of both in there. It's up to you. But pink, blue, time for pink again. Got these like stripy socks right here. All right, so we've chosen our socks. Now we gotta choose our shoes. I only have two types of shoes. Both of them are from So Sick, and it's because I don't wear heels. So I have very limited shoe types. This is especially for meetups where you walk a lot or conventions where I'm a guest at and I'm intending to walk all day. I just do not do heels. Every girl I've seen wear heels to a convention or a really long meetup ends up leaving that place with her heels in her hands. So I wear flats. So that leaves us at these. <laughs> We're wearing these. The last thing I will do after I put everything else on is to start to put these cute little bows and things that you see in my hair right now and to accessorize my dress with different like clips and things. So like I'll try out the little clips that I have in my clip drawer against the dress and see if I can customize it a little bit. This is a process that is best seen like in action. So let me put all this on and I'll show you that last little bit. And I'm back. You'll have to excuse the lighting. The lighting in my bathroom is a little bit yellow and we've reached the point where I'm going to start stacking little like ribbons and bows and things on my head to complete this look. And then I'll give you a look at the full outfit out there. And before we get started on that, I just wanted to note that I've pulled the sparkly dark pinks of my makeup look since I previously did this makeup for a completely different outfit back in with this sparkly AP clip as well as this one right here on the waist bow. So uh, you can also pull your makeup into your outfit too if you want to. I had to do it on the fly because I didn't do this look for this specific outfit. This was for Milky Planet that you saw earlier, which has deeper pinks and matches a little easier with what you're looking at. So let's get right to it. You'll notice I picked these wrist cuffs. So I went with pink blouse, pink wrist cuffs, pink headdress. And to get back to the part that you've been waiting for, let's start stacking stuff on my head so you can learn how I do that. All right, so first things first, what I usually do when I'm stacking stuff on my head is I will go back and forth to my little accessories box. But since nobody has time for that, I went ahead and I just grabbed a bunch of stuff that I thought might match such as these bows that I made right here. I made these two. These pink poof balls from Flonfi. These little guys that I was wearing earlier. A, a fan gave me these. If you gave me these, please shout out in the comments because they're really cute and fun and I don't really see anybody wearing them. This AP bunny clip, even though there's no bunnies, there is a cute little like pink aesthetic to it. And you can get away with stuff that's not in the theme if it's a smaller accessory that's gonna float on your head. As well as this AP uh, heart clip, which I probably won't use because I've already used this like glittery star clip right here. And these are two, see, that's two completely different pinks. I'm very unlikely to put that up here because it doesn't complement what else I've got going on. All right, so let's get started. And it's pretty simple, really. All I do is I just start stacking. I, I put them up against my head. You'll see that I'm looking in the lens right now and I'll look in the mirror, usually at home, and I'll have, I'll just kind of like start building. And what I like to do, especially for cords like these, I'll often do a kind of back and forth. So I might do like pink here, blue here, another pink on the other side and so forth, but it's really, honestly, it's just kind of trial and error. It's kind of like doing Mod Podge or something like that. You're just kind of stacking things and seeing if you like how they look. And sometimes I'll go back and forth between my accessories drawer and the mirror over here, like five or six times. Like there, there's not necessarily like an exact system. It's more just, do I like this or not? So like, like you just saw, I just put that poof ball on my head kind of at random because I kind of like it. 
And now I wanna try the other side and see if I like it over there. I think this is buildable. And sometimes I won't immediately like it. Like with these poof balls right now, I'm not exactly sold on it, but I wanna kinda of keep working on it. So I'll move that other poof ball over. And this is what I consider the borders of a buildable piece. So now either I wanna put a blue there or a pink there. I'm honestly leaning towards putting a blue there. So what I'll do is I'll put this blue bow right here on the side of the poof ball. And now we need to do pink again. So we've got pink right here. Do a bow that I made. I made both of these, I made the blue ones and the pink ones. Put a, one of my pink handmade bows in the center there. See, pink, blue, pink. Now it's time to go back to blue. I sew my bows into little clips. So what I'll do is I'll clip them into my hair. And sometimes I won't quite get it right and I'll have to adjust them a little. But to me, I find that a lot more like solid than using hair combs. Because hair combs tend to slide around on me because I don't use wigs. So I need something with a little bit better of a grip than that. And that is why I sew little clips into my bows. See? So now we have kind of like a uh, halo or an arc of stuff on my head. So pink pom-pom, blue handmade bow, pink handmade bow, blue again, pink pom-pom. So it goes back and forth and you just have a cute little like arc. And that's, it gives you kind of something to build on. And you can actually build further than that, say with like this rabbit clip. If I wanna add like even more stuff in there, I totally can. I could take this rabbit clip and I could put it in between these two bows. I could put it off to the side here and then go find something to balance it out. I could also take a look at these and see if I like the kind of like festive dark pink craziness somewhere up in there. And while I could do that, I'm not exactly feeling it at the moment. And that's not an uncommon feeling to have when I'm putting together this kind of like crazy on the fly headdress is uh, I may not necessarily like all the stuff that I've brought out to use. It may be that I put away 50% of the stuff that I took out. But the result is that you end up with a really cute, like fun headdress that you may not have made otherwise if you didn't give each piece at least a chance to go on your head. The point is have a little patience, have a little persistence, and you'll come out the other side looking halfway decent. Speaking of which, I think we are actually already done. I don't feel the need to add more things to my head. You absolutely could. You could totally continue to put shit on your head. But I tend to just add stuff until I'm satisfied. And at this point, I'm satisfied. <laughs> which means that it's time for us to head back into the other room and I'm gonna try and use my wide angle lens to show you this fracking outfit. And we're back and this is the resulting outfit. Luckily I didn't have to use my wide angle lens to capture it because that shoots the quality to hell. As you can see, all the pieces I chose kept with the pink and blue color theme. And the resulting outfit, I think, turned out really, really cute. A print like Wonder Cookie absolutely has the potential to be corded in a much more complicated manner. We could absolutely pull out the cute little lavenders or the mints or even the yellows in this and it would look phenomenal. But when it comes to just basic cording advice, I feel like this particular look is an easy place to start especially if you're a newbie and you're looking to learn the basics of cording. And in general, when you're putting together an outfit, it helps if you look at the general theme. I use it sweets. Is it stars? Is it bunnies? Is it bears? And then the colors. Is it blue? Is it pink? Is it pastel yellow? Is this a heavily Sweet Lolita inspired cohorting video? Yes. But whose channel do you think you're on? And honestly, while I did give you a lot of very OTT sweet centric advice today, the same color blocking and general theme acknowledgement is the same for gothic, classic, or punk. I hope this is helpful to those of you wondering how the heck I put my outfits together. And for those of you who are still confused, honestly, just trial and error. You just gotta get in your closet and start fiddling around with your clothes and eventually you will develop some sort of style. You can speed up this process by scrolling through places like Instagram, looking through closet of frills, seeing what other people are doing. And while I don't recommend you copy them to the extent that you look like you're about to start wearing their skin, it is a good place to start seeking inspiration because there are only so many ways that someone can wear a dress. A lot of us have dresses in our closets in common and there's no point in stressing yourself out thinking I have to be 100% unique all the time. It is still creepy to copy someone's cord point for point, but it's not bad practice to have a look at what other people are doing out there and 
give yourself some inspiration to work with, especially at the start. And you'll find that veteran Lolitas continue to do that, continue to sample from the wider community, because it is much more fun to interact with the aesthetic as a group than it is to just like hole yourself up in your closet and never come out again. I hope that helps some of you. The last brain cell on deck just clucked out, and I'm gonna go take all of this off. I'd like to thank my patrons for making whatever the heck you just saw possible, and should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that I don't recommend you watch ever for any reason.